Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today I have another Fortnite review for you. We have more of the 4-inch figures from Jazzwares, and these are really, really cool. So, let me put the camera down. I had to kind of hold it up to get all of them in the frame there. <laughs> but these are Series 2 in the wave of Fortnite figures. And I've been collecting the Fortnite toys. I have Series 1. Uh, grab a couple random figures that I have near me. So some figures come sold by themselves. Some come like in the pack that you see here. Some come in these other sets that you can buy. Uh, but there's a variety of them. And I think they're really cool. I think they, they represent a lot of the, the different skins pretty well that you can get in the game. And a decent bit of articulation and, and detail and paint. So yeah, I, I enjoy collecting these. And I love the characters in Fortnite. There's such a variety and they're so much fun. So Hair Series 2, and I wanted to collect all of them in the wave and show you uh, a little review of all of these figures. So let's jump to it. So um, the cool thing about these is uh, the packaging uh, goes along with the rarity of the figure. So if it's a legendary rarity figure, gold packaging, uh, or it's like orange-ish, whatever, but you know, it's meant to be like the legendary. Um, and uh, it reflects the character. So here we have Havoc, and they call it solo mode because basically it's sold by itself, solo. They have squad mode packs, which are four figure packs. So kind of clever naming scheme there. But each figure comes with uh, one of their pickaxes, basically, as well as a building material. Um, so you do have that. Now, granted, I've mentioned in previous videos of the Fortnite toys, I hate the building aspect of the toys. It doesn't work well. It's frustrating. But uh, using one of these building figures as a stand for the characters is pretty cool. So because it comes with a building figure, it's like a stand right there, which is which is nice. Uh, building material, rather. Um, so yeah, so these, you can find them at your local Target, GameStop, wherever. I got these all from GameStop, um, so they're $12.99 there. I don't know if Target has them cheaper or not, but just FYI. But here it is. So here's the back of the packaging showing you uh, the other figures in the series right there. More dropping in soon. So they've been cranking these out, and really, really cool. So that's Havoc. Uh, and another legendary we have is Battlehound right here, uh, which is also pretty cool. So again, we have the figure the pickaxe and uh, building material. And then we have the Skull Trooper. I actually have this skin, so it's really cool. I like getting figures of ones that I have especially, so that's that's pretty neat. And he has uh, green, so not quite as rare as some of these other figures in the game itself, um, but a really cool skin. Uh, then we have the Dark Bomber right here which is really neat because we did actually get the Bright Bomber uh, in a previous release, uh, but now we have the Dark Bomber, which is one of the the newer variants, I think, relatively speaking. Uh, but it's, it's really cool to have that variant um, as well. So there you go. The future looks dark. Um, then we have Calamity right here. So again, I'll show you up close looks once I open all of these, but I just want to show you the packaging real quick so you can get a feel for that. We have the Toxic Trooper right here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. There you go. Dominate the hot zone. And then, the other thing, they did this in the first series as well, the early survival kit. Um, and I think it had, was it Omega? I think it was. I, I forget the name of it. But they're doing it again in series two. So it's similar to the solo mode packs, but it's a little bit bigger and it's a little bit more expensive. So at GameStop, these are $12.99. This one's $19.99. Um, because they call it the early game survival kit. So not only does it come with a figure and a um, uh, pickaxe, and building materials, but rather instead of one building material, you get four, um, and you get um, a back bling, uh, a weapon, and an umbrella glider as well. So uh, you kind of get the full set of everything that you need, which is actually really, really cool. But also, this one in particular comes with four exclusive editing materials. So instead of like wood or any of the other materials, it's blue uh, as if you were editing something. So that's actually really clever. Uh, I didn't even think about them making something like that, but that's actually really smart uh, of them to do. Again, I hate the whole building thing because it's really frustrating how to connect all the pieces. But it's still a clever idea for what they were trying to accomplish there. Uh, and then again in the back it tells you one figure, four inch, and eight accessories included. So, without further ado, let's get all these open and take a look. 
All right, here is series two out of the packaging, and these are all pretty cool. So let's just jump right in. We're gonna start with the early game survival kit right up front right here. So uh, this is the visitor and he just fell over. So the one thing that I'll mention right away uh, that I kind of touched upon, you have editing pieces here instead of your other like wood pieces or other materials. Um, but the one downside is while these other pieces have little pegs on them for the figures to stand on, this doesn't. Um, I guess because it doesn't make as much sense for the figures to be standing on top of an edit piece, I guess. But that's still a little unfortunate. Uh, I mean, look, I have a ton of extra building pieces, so I have, excuse me, I have more stands for this thing, so that's not an issue, but, um, you know, just a minor little thing. Uh, but you do have four editing pieces, so you can, you know, edit whatever you want. So there you go. Um, then let's take a quick look at the accessories that he comes with. And I should mention, uh, all of these figures come with an updated, like, checklist of things. So you have all the characters from Series 1 and Series 2 for the 4-inch right here. Uh, you have all of their weapons with the various uh, rarities right here. Uh, and then on the back, you have all of your harvesting tools um, and the back blings. And it shows you what's, what all the new ones are as well compared to Series 1 and Series 2. So I don't remember the names of all these things, the harvesting materials and stuff, so I'm going to utilize this. So this is just the beach umbrella, basically, but it comes in two pieces and you just attach it on right there. And uh, there it is. So pretty cool, you can have the figure um, gliding in on it if you would like, um, but you know, there it is, there's your, your glider. He also comes with uh, a weapon right here, uh, which I believe is a heavy shotgun, uh, or not actually, looking at the picture, it looks similar, maybe. Um, it is some kind of shotgun, I think. I think it's a heavy shotgun, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, so that is what I'm gonna go with purple variety because I think it's that one uh, But this extra little piece sticking out. I don't see it there, but I think that's what it is. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, it's still pretty cool. So there you have it um, So all the figures can hold the the weapons too. Um, so that's not an issue So I'll just show real quick since I mentioned it, but there you go. Okay um, And then uh, he actually also comes with a back bling right here so the one for the visitor, this back bling, um, actually, where are the back blings? Down here, okay. Uh, is the off-world rig. So that is the back bling uh, listed for this figure. So attaches right on, and uh, there you go. So it's cool to have one that fits the character, because in previous releases, and I guess also in this series, if you want some of the corresponding back blings, you gotta buy some of the other sets that they've released to get the matching back bling. So they kind of get you in that way. If you really like a character and you want the full set, you gotta buy a couple of different things. Uh, his harvesting tool that he has right here uh, is the cliffhanger harvesting tool. So pretty, Simple, but uh, kind of looks pretty neat. So there you have it. So let's take a look at articulation, right? So let's take the back bling off, first of all. And uh, and actually, you know, before we even do that, I guess I didn't really take an up-close look at the detail of these figures either. So pretty nice detail. Um, I don't know how well it's really showing up on the camera. I don't think it is showing up that well. But the, the face, you can kind of see it. The face sort of has some red lines going on it on top there. Maybe if I move my lights away, you can kind of see it. It's it's hard to tell with the black. There you go. I think you can see it right on there, the red, for a second. Um, but also, I really like the, the paint that they used. It's kind of like a metallic-y look a little bit. So that's pretty cool. Decent bit of detail for these figures. Try and zoom out a little so it'll focus. Yeah, pretty neat. So articulation, head rotates around, also moves up and down, side to side as well, so decent range of movement. The arm would rotate all the way around, except you have these shoulder pieces in the way. Uh, and again, so it does move up all the way because these can bend upwards, but um, there you go, okay? Uh, then what you have is a little bit of elbow articulation, uh, not too much, like it, it does, not bend in words as uh, as much as you would think, but uh, it does have some articulation there. This whole piece rotates. 
and then you have the uh, hand rotation and movement up and down, okay? Uh, then you have this whole upper body that rotates around. Um, this whole top half of the body right here rotates around. Uh, you have some leg movements forward. There you go. This piece rotates right there. Double joint at the knee. And then uh, this does not rotate, but the, the foot will rotate and move up and down. Okay, so decent bit of articulation for the figure. And of course you can add on the back bling. And there you go. So this is all one solid piece. It doesn't move up or down or anything, but it's, it looks pretty cool. So there you have the visitor. All right, so let's move him off to the side here. And let's just go right down the list. So let's take the Battle Hound next. So again, same building material that came with all of these, the wood, there you go. The only accessory that all these come with is their harvesting tool. So the Battle Hound has the Silver Fang harvesting tool. So let's take a look at that right here. So pretty cool looking. Interesting design. There you go. Uh, and here's the figure itself. I do like the, the gold that they use. And again, pretty nice detail for these little four inch figures. I think they did a nice job at capturing the little intricacies of some of these characters. So uh, there are larger size Fortnite figures uh, with more articulation, more detail, all that good stuff, but of course they cost more. Um, and they don't have as much variety because they are bigger and and they cost more. So they, they tend to release more of these smaller size figures. So um, I think that it's, you know, you get the best bang for your buck basically for these. Uh, so articulation, uh, very similar, um, but you know, again, rotation. Um, oh, this actually popped right off. Um, and there's some plastic on his head. Um, so what they basically did is they, uh, that's funny. Can this just come off? Should I take it off? I mean, I guess technically it could just, it's just plastic. It just pops right off. So, um, <laughs> there's a hidden face inside. So that's the character that's on the inside of the battle hound. Um, but essentially this is supposed to just pop right on like that. So. There you have it, uh, secrets. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, you have arm rotation, uh, movement upwards as well. Um, rotation here, elbow, hand movement and everything. So that's all the same. Um, this whole upper body piece and then the top half of the body, that's all the same as the other figure. So I'm not gonna spend too much time. I'm going to focus more on the differences in, in articulation now. Um, here you just have this piece that kind of uh, inhibits a little bit of movement, but not that much. It's still pretty flexible. Same rotation there, double joint here, same movement in the foot. So the rest of the articulation is, is all the same. Um, but yeah, pretty cool design, pretty cool uh, character. So I think it uh, looks good. So there you go. There's the battle hound. All right. Onto Calamity. So there's your, your material there. And Calamity has the harvesting tool known as Reckoning. So let's take a look at Reckoning right here. Pretty cool design. There you go. And here is Calamity up close. So, again, nice detail that they have on these figures. The belt buckle and like the ammo clips on it and everything. The detail on the, on the helmet kind of being like ammo clips. That's pretty cool too. So yeah, pretty nice detail overall. 
So, in terms of articulation, this one's going to be hindered a little bit due to the robe and all that kind of stuff, but the head still has the full range of motion there, okay? The hat does not come off. Uh, the arm here is going to be a little bit inhibited, but not that much actually. You still surprisingly, because these are bendable, you still get a decent range of motion. The rest is all going to be the same. Um, on this side, uh, really no, this thing is so minuscule that it really doesn't affect the articulation at all. Um, again, same upper body movement and everything, leg movement. Um, but because this is so flexible, you really can still do almost everything. So um, while, you know, there's a little bit of limiting movement here, for the most part, it's very much the same as the other figures. So they actually did a nice job at uh, not blocking some of the movement here. So there you go. There's Calamity. All right, on to the Dark Bomber right here. So let's move that out of the way. And the Dark Bomber has the harvesting tool known as Thunder Crash right there. And of course, as I was saying earlier, the Dark Bomber uh, matches alongside the Bright Bomber and the Rainbow Smash uh, harvesting tool. So this is a previous release, and as you can see, they go along very nicely. So let's take a quick look at Dark Bomber and then we'll do a, a real comparison of the two. So, zooming in. Great job uh, on the, the face there with the little details and then also on the chest design right there. That uh, evil loot llama thing, like, that's actually really nicely done. It looks really like crisp and clean, the paint detailing, you know? So that actually is done really well. I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme overall, um, but that is really nicely done. So, there you have it. Um, and then here is the actual harvesting tool. Sorry, my camera just does not want to focus today. Um, also really nicely done. This is a cool color scheme. The red and purple. Little bits of silver there. So that actually looks really cool. So bringing this into comparison to Rainbow Smash, Rainbow Smash seems to be a little bit more of a simpler design. Um, so I actually kind of like Thunder Crash pretty well. Uh, and then here is the uh, Bright Bomber. And you can see the, the chest design that she has, obviously being quite different. But, as you can sort of see, it's very much, um, I think, pretty similar. It might, I don't, it might be the same mold, I, I kind of have to look at it a little bit more closely, but at a glance it seems to be very, very similar at least, so they might have been able to reuse a lot of stuff. Um, but also, like for example here, like, this part of the body is smooth, but here you have sort of this molded texture. So that that is actually different there. Which is kind of why I kind of think the Bright Bomber piece actually works better a little bit than the Dark Bomber, because it just looks a little more plain looking, you know? Um, but otherwise, it looks to be a, a repaint for the most part. Which is kind of how the character is in the game, too. So... Um, it's, it's faithful to that, but just for comparison's sake. So, there you go. So, um, in terms of the articulation, uh, it's, you know, very, very much what you would expect from everything else that we sort of talked about. So, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other pieces that are missing. No, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same articulation, so n nothing limiting movement or anything. Uh, the female figures basically have the same articulation as the, uh, the guys, so uh, no issues there. Alright, on to the next character here, which is Havoc. Let's take a look at that. And the harvesting material that Havoc has is the Lug Axe right here. So, kind of very basic looking. But uh, it is what it is, I guess. And here is the figure itself, so let's zoom in. Uh, some nice detail here, you know, on the sides there, a little skull, and yeah, so pretty cool. So. 
so yeah I don't know I mean I'm not super big on this design in particular but I mean they did it well you know so if you like the design then certainly uh, does it justice um, in terms of articulation it's gonna be pretty much what we expect except the arms have a little bit of a hard time rotating here because this piece kind of extends outward a little but not too bad if you sort of, instead of whole putting it in all the way, if you kind of pull it out slightly and then rotate it, you're going to have a little bit easier time. Um, but otherwise, it's exactly the same as the other figures. So, there you go. Um, on to the Skull Trooper right here. So, his pickaxe that you see is the Reaper. So... Uh, kind of basic looking, but, I mean, Skull Reaper, I mean, I guess it kind of works. Uh, and here is the Skull Trooper. <coughs> Would have been cool if they made this, like, glow in the dark as well, because I know there is the, uh, the variant skin where it glows. Um, and actually, that's what I should say. I don't think I have, I don't have the original Skull Trooper. I don't think. Uh, but I have one of the, like, the recolored versions later, like the glowing one or something. I forget what it was. Um, so would have been nice to have like that sort of variant or that option, but you know, whatever, if this is the OG one, then I guess it makes sense to use that. Um, but, uh, yeah, really interesting style. So pretty cool. Obviously there's not too much to the design as it is just black with you know the the white skull markings on it but uh they they definitely probably reused a similar body to one of the other characters or to most of these characters they all seem to go off of the same basic form which again um makes sense given how a lot of the skins are um but uh it's a clever way to be able to quickly make figures also uh, articulation, there's nothing really to say about it. It's pretty much what you would expect. Same, same stuff. So you can make whatever, you know, you can kick your enemies, which you can't do in the game, but you can do with the figures. And, uh, there you go. Pretty cool. I like this Skull Trooper. And last but not least, we have the Toxic Trooper right here. And his harvesting tool is the Autocleave. So, uh, interesting design, I guess. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's alright. It's color scheme and everything. And here is the figure itself. So, pretty interesting. Sort of that, that light green kind of uh, paint scheme with the little hints of yellow. Yeah, not bad. Um, in terms of articulation, again, uh, so the head isn't gonna really move up and down as much because of the way it's designed, but it will rotate. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. There's nothing else that's hindering any kind of movement or anything, so um, yeah, you're, you're good to go with this one. So there you have it. This is the Series 2 wave of figures. Now these are not all of the figures that have released because they do have new sets of figures. These are all of the new solo individual releases, um, but there's a lot of other new Fortnite figures that they have also released that I will be reviewing on this channel coming up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but let me know what you think of these figures. Do you, uh, if you're a fan of Fortnite, uh, obviously if you're not a fan of Fortnite, you're probably not gonna care about these, but if you are a fan of Fortnite, then uh, do you have any of these skins in the game? And do you like these figures? Are you collecting any of them? Because uh, I, I definitely recommend them. You know, even if it's just a couple of these that you want to get, I think these are nice little uh, figures and nice representations of the characters from the game. And I love, that's one of my favorite things about Fortnite is the characters. I think they all look a, a lot of fun. And uh, that's probably why I've spent way too much money in that game. Uh, <laughs> but uh it's pretty cool. So hopefully you enjoyed this review. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Take care and I will see you later.